technique that I like is to to work within the print of the fabric and to be able to, or the texture of the fabric, and use that to create a new texture. Hi, my name's Sheila McKay. And I'm Sarah Greenhall. And we're from the McKay Manor Musers. You might ask, where in the world did that name come from? Well, McKay Manor is the place where my daughter and I lived in Vancouver, Washington, and we used to call it, hi, you arrived at the McKay Manor. The Musers, uh, that actually comes from Greek mythology. Um, a muser is somebody who inspires uh, um, art in other people. And so that's what we hope to do for you guys, is to help inspire your inner artisan um, when you work on your sewing projects. So today we wanted to share with you some fabric or some ideas with some of the really soft fabrics that you might find out in the marketplace. And some of you might be a little apprehensive to use these fabrics because they have some characteristics that you may not be used to sewing with. So we want to share with you some tips today on how to make it easier to work with these super soft cuddly fabrics. First thing we want to share with you is that these fabrics definitely have a nap. So the way you can figure out whether or not it has a nap, run your hand down it, just like you would run your hand down your favorite pet. Find out which way it goes. You'll feel that it goes a different direction. It will look very differently. Uh, so the next tip we want to talk about uh, is the edge. Um, so with these specialty fabrics, they actually um, are really cool because you can use the raw edge. Uh, on this quilt, we created the binding simply by folding the back over to the front and just using a zigzag stitch to stitch right along the raw edge. Uh, this is beneficial because then it saves you a lot of time in having to do a folded edge um, because this raw edge will never fray. Um, it's also helpful when you're doing appliques um, because you can just sew around the edge and you don't have to worry that it's going to eventually fray when you wash it um, because the, these specialty fabrics um, never fray. And also on this one, um, we created an applique where we just sewed right down the middle so it actually leaves these edges completely loose. So it can create a 3D effect um, and give you a whole new texture to your project because these edges won't fray. Next thing you want to know about these fabrics is they definitely stretch. When you pull them one direction, it stretches a lot. When you pull it the other direction, it doesn't stretch at all. So you may want to use that when you're creating your projects as well. If you want to do borders and bindings, try and do it on the straight of grain where it doesn't stretch. If it does stretch, make sure that when you do it, you cut the piece exactly the size you want it, and then you pin it in place to hold it in place so that when you end up with the end, your project will lie nice and flat rather than having it actually stretch and be wavy. Uh, so another tip that we've found um, when working with these fabrics is that typically cutting ends up being a huge mess uh, because it creates what we like to call this little cuddle dust that goes everywhere and you'll end up getting it all over your clothes and in your hair. Um, so we found that it's great to use um, a vacuum to have just a little portable vacuum that you keep next to you so when you're using your rotary cutter and you're uh, cutting all of your, your strips or whatever pieces you're making, um, that you can just use a vacuum to suck it up right after you cut it. Um, otherwise, your house will look like mine and it will be completely covered in dust. <gasps> Another thing, it's definitely really fun to use fusible applique when you're doing the projects. So this one, for instance, where we actually put the bird on the fabric, we actually put the fusible applique underneath the, um, or in between the two layers and the uh, uh, cotton fabrics to keep it together, to keep it in place. However, with some of these textured fabrics, make sure you remember don't iron directly on it or you will lose the texture. The little dimples will go away and it will become flat. So be careful when you do that. Uh, so another tip, um, when you're cutting fabric, after you finish cutting it, you may want to spray it lightly uh, with some water and then toss it in the dryer and that will help get any of the extra cutting dust off of it so that it uh, doesn't end up getting all over your project or all over your house. Um, and also, just be aware that some of the fabrics that have a texture, uh, it's, not, it's not advisable to necessarily put them in the dryer. Uh, so just make sure you know which ones you're working with because some of them it's just perfectly fine to put in the dryer, but some of them you don't want to ruin the texture by putting them in the dryer. And the last thing is, don't be afraid to mix the super soft fabrics 
with the cottons. It's okay to mix them up. This is super soft fabric, but most of what you see actually here is a cotton fabric. So without any other ado, Kara, let's take them to a really simple project so that we can show you just how easy it is to create your first project using these super soft fabrics. Um, what we've done here is we're going to create just a very small a baby blanket that you could give away as a gift or keep for one of your favorite little grandchildren. She just had one. Uh, first thing we did is Not we, oh uh, yeah, she just had a baby, <laughs> my grandchild. Uh, the first thing we would do is actually round the edges just mm -hmm. a bit. So the way I like to round edges is pick any kind of round surface from your kitchen. If you want a, a, a circle that's about this shape, just put it on there and draw a line around it. If you want a bigger one, um, use a plate. If you want a really small one, use a little tiny, uh, like a measuring cup. But the first thing you want to do is just make a round shape. With that, um, we're going to have Kira just cut the edge off. And as she's doing that, you'll want to make sure that you cut all the rounded edges on your blanket. And then when you're pinning it together, we recommend that you use long pins with uh, large heads because what you don't want to do is have that pin get buried in your fabric and then run over it with your sewing machine. So pick pins with long heads. Okay. Oh, and use really sharp scissors because otherwise it's very difficult to uh, actually cut through, cut through the fabric. What we've also found is that it um, tends to dull the, the scissors fairly quickly. So have a sharpener handy. So a few things you want to know to start with your sewing project. Uh, your needle, you're going to want a 90 uh, stretch needle to be able to use. Um, you're also going to want to use a walking foot if you have it. It helps when using um, these specialty fabrics. Also, you might want to consider when picking your threads uh, which fabric that you're, that you're using. Uh, with these specialty fabrics, they, they tend to uh, hide your stitches anyway because the pile is so thick. Um, so the color doesn't tend to show up um, very much from the outside and so it's actually more helpful to pick the color that you want to see on the inside. For instance on this we have the white side and the black side. So we've picked our top color to be black to contrast with the white and the bottom to be white to contrast with the black. That way if we mess up and we want to come back and undo it we can actually find the stitch. So we're going to just uh, stitch around this corner here. And when you're sewing with these fabrics, because the pile is so thick, it's helpful to sew at at least a half an inch uh, seam. That's what I find most helpful. You just want to make sure your edges stay together. And then when you get to the side that tends to be more stretchy is the side you definitely want to make sure that uh, you have pinned really well and that you uh, stay within those pins, otherwise it's not going to line up in the end. So uh, with that we'll move on to what it looks like when we're finished. So we're going to assume that Kira zipped mm. right around the outer edge of that blanket and here's how it came out. Mm. Um, with, with that, we wanted to just share a couple more ideas with you in terms of now that you're comfortable sewing with these kind of fabrics, what can you do? This is a, a, a little baby blanket that we created that actually uses the applique methods we talked about. It actually has some 3D pieces. It actually has little eyes and a nose. And then we've actually even appliqued the little tracks on the back. Our next one. Uh, you can do other things with applique. For instance, I just had a daughter and uh, her name is Gabby. And so, uh, you know, it's cute to put a, a personalized name on it um, and make it a fun gift for somebody. The next thing you can do is actually cut your fabric in different ways. So what we've done here is this is actually called a chinchilla fabric. And what you can see is it has long channels. What we did was we took a piece of the fabric and we cut a big X across it. And we ended up taking two pieces from one and two pieces from the other. We had two X's, and we came up with a, uh, a very interesting design just by cutting it. We've also used this one, where we actually used two contrasting fabrics. 
And then we put a small um, border of like the chinchilla fabric in between the two pieces of fabric. And you can there also, you don't, don't be afraid to use a more sophisticated uh, print for even a baby blanket. Uh, people are, are actually appreciating this a lot more. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, little baby critters. It can be something that has a really pretty print and be a lot more sophisticated. And young moms like myself will really enjoy it. Looks like we have time for one more idea. Let us share one last one with you. This is one where we actually took a strip of the, the uh, cuddly fabric and put it right in the center of the blanket just to add interest. And now that you know the techniques, you can apply these techniques to all kinds of projects. You can make things like pillows, bags. Just remember that inspiration is everywhere and unleash your inner artisan.